in our Bibles today, we're going to look at several verses, but the first one I'd like us to look at is in Luke chapter 6 and verse 35. Luke 6, uh, verse 35. And as you're turning to Luke 6, verse 35, um, those of us that, that come up here and we minister the word, unless we're going through a, a book of the Bible week by week, um, you prayerfully consider, you look to the Lord for a word that you, that you hope and you trust the Lord will give to you that he might share with those to whom you're speaking with. And uh, unless you've been up here before, um, you maybe you don't appreciate that how challenging that can be. You know, like, what is the word of the Lord? We have the word of the Lord, but what is his word for, for you? And what is that word for today? And a lot of times you wonder, well, this is on my heart, but is this really appropriate? Is this what I should speak? I mean, there, it's inexhaustible. The, the topics and the things that we can talk about, but what is it the Lord would have us hear? And that's, as we come up to speak, that's what we want to find ourselves doing. And um, I kind of struggled this week, you know, thinking of this, and I can think of that, and this would be profitable, and this would be good. But then it, it kind of landed on my heart, and it was such, I thought, wow, this is a good word. Not, not that I'm giving it, I trust, but it's a good word in that it, it glorifies the Lord. It magnifies him and really makes him and his character seen more clearly. It's a good word that it's a, a blessing to all who hear. Maybe I should say, not just those who hear, but those who hear and appropriate and as the Lord Jesus would say, go and do likewise. And it's a good word because it's, we're found in our Bibles, we're found in the word of God that's been given to us. And that first verse here that we're going to look at, we're going to look at seven verses, but in Luke 6, verse 35, and the Lord Jesus taught us here, it says, but love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. And it says, therefore, he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. And what I'd like to look at with these seven verses and, and maybe some more for our little time together here is this word kind. I think a while ago we, we looked at this a bit, but um, to look at it afresh again, we read here that God is kind and that he's, his kind is all-embracing and it's universal to those who are thankful. And we read here that God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. In uh, Jeremiah 9, verse 24, we read, I am the Lord which exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, says the Lord. Wow, so one of those attributes there is loving kindness. And in Jeremiah, as I read, it says the Lord that he exercises, that he performs, that he operates loving kindness among those other between uh, righteousness and judgment. But not only does God exercise and he moves and he gives and he acts and he is loving kindness, but that he delights in it, that our God delights and takes pleasure in loving kindness when we, his people, also exercise ourselves in loving kindness. And if we um, would be like our Heavenly Father here, it's all the more so when we do it to the unthankful and to the evil. In Luke 6.35, the first verse I read there, it says, And you shall be children of the highest, for he is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. 
So to be children of the highest is to be like him. When we read our Bibles that we're, we're told to be godly, that the Christian, the person who confesses the Lord, that they should be godly. And what is it to be godly? It's to be God-like. Now, I hope I'm not going to be misunderstood to be godlike in in um, having authority and claiming things and whatever whatever all that might. But when I say godly, it's like God is God is love. To be godly is to exercise love. God is kind. If I'm to be godly, I need to be kind. And God is righteous. The righteous Lord loves righteousness. If I'm to be godly, I am to be a righteous man, or you're to be a righteous woman as well. Amen. Our um, one daughter, our Bethany, had her third, I had a count here, her third baby recently. And uh, it's a little boy, and he's just a couple of months old. But boy, that little boy is the spitting image of his mother, our daughter. And her name is Bethany, our daughter. But she had the nickname growing up, Bethy, B-E-F-F-Y. We would call her Bethy this and Bethy that. But when we see this little boy on the WhatsApp, on the videos and all that, we say, Baby Bethy. Just look, we pull out the baby pictures, it's Baby Bethy all over again. And the Lord Jesus said here, uh, to us in, in John, or excuse me, Luke 6.35, we will be children of the highest. Now, to be his children is to be godly, is to be God-like. And the Lord, the highest, is kind to the evil and to the unthankful, to the unthankful and to the evil. And so, we too, children of the highest, we ought to, people should see us, the Christian, and be able to say, that's what God is like. That's maybe why it's called a holy calling, why it's a high calling. You know, who can attain to it? By God's, by God's grace, we can at least aim for it. Another verse is in Romans uh, chapter 12, verse 10. As you're turning to Romans 12, verse 10, um, that word kind in in the original, in the Greek, there are several words that in our English we, we translate it kind. But back there in uh, Luke 6.35, where we read that, that God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil, that word kind is the same word that's translated here on the pulpit here that, uh, oh, it's not. I'm sorry, I thought it was the whole passage there. Where the Lord Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. The Lord goes on to say, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I thought the whole passage was there. But anyway, when the Lord says that to take his yoke, his yoke is easy. It's the same word, kind. It's to be easy. To be kind is to be easy to one another. And in Romans 12, verse 10, in the King James here, it says, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. But we are to be kindly affectioned. I think the NIV may say devoted there. But we are to be kindly affectioned. And in the original, again, it has to do with, uh, if I could term it this way, family love. The way the relations are with husbands and wives and parents to children, there's that, there's that tenderness, there's that affection, or at least there should be. And that is where we're told to be kindly affectioned. And also the English word kind. You ever think here, Matt, there's to be kind, to show kindness, but it's also, we have the word kin and kindred. You know, in the English it means your family, your, your bloodline, or whatever. And it is associated to be kind when they go back, the etymology, the, where we get the word and all of that, it does spring from that affection that a parent would have for a child or a spouse to another. And so, I think it's very appropriate here in Romans 12, 10, 
Paul is telling us to be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. I, I think back to my railroad days, and I, I, know, I know I've shared this before, <clears throat> but um, we worked with all kinds of different characters, and boy, characters they were. And uh, we would have had quite a few African Americans that worked with us. And African Americans, they would have their own way of describing things and talking. And um, one of the things that, that they would kind of say to each other would be, bro, you know, and brother. You know, how you doing, brother? And how you doing, bro? Well, one time, is this recorded? <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to names. Who knows where it's going to go and land? But, not that you would know them anyway. But anyway, this one fella, he dissed, you know, he disrespected the, the other guy that we worked with, the two African Americans, right? And then they it started to get heated, you know, one to the other. And the one who had done the insult or the offense or whatever, you know, bro, bro, brother, bro, bro. And the other guy says, don't call me brother. My brother wouldn't do that to me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'll read here to be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. There's an admonition that we're to be kind to one another. And then in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, that chapter that describes love to us and the importance of love in a Christian's life. Mm -hmm. And in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, charity, or love, suffers long and is kind. It goes on to say charity, or, or love, envies not. Charity wants not itself, is not puffed up. But we read here that love is kind. And uh, the word in the original, in the Greek, what that means and what is translated to the English here is to show oneself mild, to show oneself mild. Remember, and I'm kind of thinking back here, the other word where it's translated about the Lord's yoke. He says it's easy. To be kind is to be easy, to be mild. Right? And love is kind. Love is mild. And then if you would turn to Ephesians 2, uh, verse 7. The great passage here um, in Ephesians 2, verse 7 and 8, about our salvation. And we read in Ephesians 2, verse 7, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his, that's God's, in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. It goes on to say, by grace are you saved. Now, most of us here that have uh, handled our Bibles for an, even a short period of time, we read about the grace of God, that our salvation is such that we cannot earn it, that there's no character within us, there's no performance or sacrament, there's nothing we can do to say that you have arrived and now you are saved and now you can go to heaven. When we read the law in the Old Testament and we read the high standards even in the New Testament, we see that we all fall short. None of us have a claim. The only claim that we have is judgment and death. But we see here, by the love of God and His grace, that grace is such, if we were to look at the whole package there on Calvary, the work of the Lord Jesus on that cross there and then for us, that by grace that we are saved. But in Ephesians 2, verse 7, it says, His grace in His kindness. Wow, so grace is brought to us by the kindness of God through Christ Jesus, and by grace are you saved. And then if you would turn to Ephesians 4.32, you 
You read, and be ye kind one to another, <coughs> tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And is put there so gently, but it is a command. We're commanded to be a kind people, and especially so in the church, in the house, in the family of God. Here we're told, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. So to be kind is to be godly. To be kind is to be obedient. We've been told to be a kind people. I remember another character back in my railroad days. They were drinking buddies. And um, yeah, I won't mention names. But, but anyway, there, there was one fellow was exasperated with his other drinking buddy, whatever. I remember him saying, I could strangle him. Just, but he's my buddy. <laughs> you know, there's a couple of drinkers there, right? They, maybe they knew a little bit more about how we should be in the family, in the household of God. My, I could strangle him, but he's my buddy. And as we do step on each other's toes, we grind each other, we rub each other, file the, the wrong way, and we bump up and all this and that. Maybe we could strangle one another, but he's my brother. He's my sister. He's a child of God. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. And then in Colossians 3.12, in Colossians 3.12 we're told, Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. So, one of the, uh, the apparel that the Christian is to put on here is kindness. We should be clothed with kindness. We should be known for our kindness. Colossians 3.12 Again, it says we should put on kindness. Uh, that same word is in uh, the fruit of the Spirit, in Galatians 5.22, where it speaks of one of the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness. There it's translated gentleness. So to put on kindness in the fruit of the Spirit also is kindness or gentleness. There's a, a verse in Proverbs 11, 17, and in the, the, old, the older version, it says, the merciful man does good to his own soul. The NIV says, those who are kind benefit themselves. Remember in the beginning I said that this, this is such a good word, not only does it glorify and magnify the Lord, but it's good for those who hear and those who apply and again in Proverbs 11, 17, it says, those who are kind benefit themselves. There was a, an article in the BBC, they're going to help us with our message here today, and I'm not going to read this whole great big thing, but remember, as I just look at a couple of lines here in this article, remember in Proverbs 11, 17, that the one who is kind, the man or the woman who is kind, does good or benefits yourself or your own soul. And there happened to be this article in the BBC says, why being kind to others is good for your health. Mm -hmm. To be kind is good for your health. Isn't that yeah. what the proverb said back in 11, yeah. millennia ago mm -hmm. in Proverbs 11, 17. Mm -hmm. I'll just read a couple of little lines here. It kind of starts off, it says, newspapers started writing about Betty Lowe when she was 96 years old. Despite being long past retirement age, she was still volunteering at a cafe at Salford Royal Hospital in Greater Manchester, UK, serving coffee, washing dishes, and chatting to patients. 
Then low turned 100. Still volunteers at hospital, the headlines ran. Then she reached 102. And the headlines declared, still volunteering. The same again when she turned 104. <laughs> Even at 106, Lowe would work at the cafe once a week. And her name, uh, Lowe here, says, Lowe told the reporters who interviewed her that the reason she kept working at the cafe, she believed volunteering kept her healthy. Amen. And they did all kinds of experiments and MRI and blood tests and all this and that and about people being kind. Um, some of you here will really like this one. Re grandparents who regularly babysit their grandchildren have a mortality risk that is up to 37% lower than those who don't provide such child care. That's a larger effect than may be achieved from regular exercise. And there was a couple of I'm sorry? I may adopt a couple of grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Amen, sister. <laughs> So, to be kind is good spiritually and is also very good um, uh, physically as well. Another thing that the, the, uh, it was in that article, and I can send it out on the church WhatsApp, so you read it yourself. But they, um, they, they don't know if it was an experiment or what, but they said that when people give blood, as opposed to having blood drawn at the hospital for test, testing or whatever, that they feel less discomfort or less pain from what I remember here. And so that's even though giving, donating blood, the needle is bigger and it has more of a impact or whatever. Yeah. So the fact that people know that they're giving, they're doing something good, they're being kind, it lessens the pain or the trauma or whatever as opposed to the other way there. And boy, the scriptures knew that so long ago in Proverbs 11, 17. Those who are kind benefit themselves. Amen. It goes on to say, but the cruel bring ruin on themselves. That's the opposite. Maybe that's a topic for another day. But back to our New Testament, in Titus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, And in Titus chapter 3, verse 4, it says, But after that the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. And there it is again. God's love expressed to us is kindness. But after the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Um, not to derail our train of thought here from this topic of kindness, but the first verse we looked at in Luke 6.35 talked about that we should be like that we shall be the children of the highest, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. And in our New Testament, uh, this this name for God in the New Testament is some 13 times. Either he's called the highest or the most high. And there's many times in the Old Testament there. But it's 13 times in the New Testament, and seven of them are in Luke. There's something about Luke and that name of God the highest or the most high. And in our Bibles, we read about the enemy, the enemy of our souls and the enemy of all that is holy, the enemy of God. We read about his fall was such that he said, I will be like the highest. That's what he wanted to do. That's what he wanted to be. That's what he wanted to be recognized that I will be as the highest. Amen. But we know that there's only one 
highest, the most high God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I think I can say that when we were dead in trespasses and in sins, and when we unfortunately and tragically do sin, are we not standing in the same place as Satan? Are we not saying, I will be like the Most High? When God says, you shall not do this, and we say, I shall be like the Most High, I will do it. And God says, you should do this, you must do this. And we say, I will not do that. I will be like the Most High. It was the, the fall and the ruin of that, that spiritual being, Satan, so long ago. And it was the fall and the ruin of the human race so long ago. And we see the deadly effects of it today. And we know, because the Lord Jesus came and our Bibles tell us, that there is a day of judgment. Remember that God that he exercises himself in loving kindness, but also righteousness and judgment. There is a judgment, and there is a righteous standard. And all of us have said, I will be like the Most High. I will not, or I will. But we read here in our Bibles that yes, though the whole race, all of us are headed to judgment, that God exercises loving kindness, that God is kind to the unthankful and to the evil. And as I read there in uh, Titus 3, 4, but after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared. And there's the ultimate expression of God's kindness, that he sent his Son to bear our sin. He sent the Lord Jesus to bear the consequences of that sin on Calvary. And we read, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. God is kind. And in that kindness, he has sent his son that we might trust him, believe him, obey him because of that wonderful work and here we are coming up on the christmas season and i think even there the angelic messenger saying shall be the son of the most high glory to god in the highest and on peace on earth to men of good will i'm quoting this correctly there how wonderful how glorious that god is kind and he has told us who are his people his children, and to be his children is one who puts their trust and faith in him, that we too are to be kind. We're to be kind because our Father is kind. We are to be kind, we are commanded to be kind. We're to be kind because it's just good. It's good for others and it's good for our very selves. I want to close with this um, one last scripture in our Old Testament in 2 Samuel 9, verse 3. And the context there of 2 Samuel 9, verse 3 is before this, David had been persecuted. Uh, the family of or King Saul had sought to exterminate him, put him to death, um, that he might not be king. But God delivered David And when Saul had died and David was on the throne, this is what David said in 2 Samuel 9, 3. And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? Isn't that something? Here Saul was the enemy. Saul had sought to not only persecute him, chase him, but to kill him to put out the name of David from the earth. And God delivered David. And what is one of the first things David does? He wants to show, is there anyone left of my enemy's house that I might show the kindness of God? Not his own kindness. We do read elsewhere in our Bible that David wasn't always a kind man. But here at this point in his life, 
He wanted to show the kindness of God. And how do you show the kindness of God? He wanted to show the kindness of God to the family. Maybe going back to uh, Luke 6.35 there, to the unthankful and to the evil, to those that were try, had done, tried to do him evil, the household of Saul there. And he said, and the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God? And just as we close here, think of this, go and do likewise. Amen. 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 Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. And Lord, we live in an age where there's so much static and has been shared earlier, Lord, where there's so much noise on uh, the different technology that comes our way, or whether it's on the news or with others, and uh, so much noise, so much unkindness. But Lord, we are told to walk in the steps of the Lord Jesus, Amen. who himself was uh, kindness in the flesh. Lord, we read how God delights in kindness, that he exercises himself in loving kindness. And after the kindness and love of God, our Savior toward man appeared, we read in that book of Titus there. Lord, may we be a blessing to you, since you delight in kindness by being a kind people. Lord, may we be a blessing to those about us, even the uh, unthankful and the evil, and Lord, may we be a blessing, especially in our very own church family here. May we be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven us. And Father, we ask you to give us strength as this high and holy calling, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.